I love this bloody book. It's called Yeah, 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 The Story of Modern Pop. First of all, this goes out tonight, this goes out to um, Scotty Moore, who died last Tuesday. Wow. Um, those of you who don't know Scotty Moore, he was known most as the guitarist behind early Elvis. Scotty Moore kicked the door open for so many people. And, and, and in doing this piece, I have found there were links with Scotty Moore. So I have to do it now, I really have to do it now. But first of all, the introduction to this book. I remember reading about a kid, 12 or 13 years old, who used to spend Saturday mornings lurking in the Vintage Record Centre on Roman Way in North London. He would watch the old Teds and the young rockabillies, the dandified 50s revivalists, and the single middle-aged men walk through the door, thumb through the racks, and all ask for the same record. Do you have Cast Iron Arm by Peanuts Wilson? The answer was always no. The kid was in awe of this record. It must be, he figured, be the best record ever. What could it sound like? Who was Peanuts Wilson? Why was the arm made of cast iron? This would have been in the mid-70s when there was no way he could find out the answers to these questions or even get to hear the record because it was so rare and so in demand. He dreamed about it, tried to imagine how it might sound. Harder than Hound Dog, sharper than Summertime Blues, for this kid and its magical elusiveness, cast iron arm embodied the wonder of pop music. In the 21st century, anyone can type the name Peanuts Wilson into YouTube or Spotify or iTunes and hear cast iron arm with its honking sax, comic interludes and thunking backbeat. The same goes for the rarest British hard rock album, Growers of Mushroom by Leafhound, or Carry Me Home, a still unreleased Beach Boys outtake from their Holland album. This wasn't possible in the pre-digital age, when information was passed around pop fans via music papers and radio shows, fanzines, cassettes and word of mouth, analogue technology, airwaves, printing presses, everything in perpetual motion. Before the arrival of Napster in 2000, the gateway for iTunes, it had been this way for the past best part of five decades. This was the modern pop era. And it goes on and on. But now, my link. Some argue that rock and roll would have happened without Elvis, and they may be right. But that doesn't mean it would have taken over, not at all. Bill Haley had arrived at his sound by trial and error, mixing graft, a keen ear for what the customer wanted, and a willingness to dabble in R&B's black arts. It took him ten years to find the right sound. Elvis Presley walked into Sun Studios, Memphis, one day in summer 1954 and did it in a heartbeat. Cutting a record for his mother at Sam Phillips' Sun Studios, he told an inquisitive receptionist, I don't sing like nobody. She was impressed enough to pass Presley's name on to Phillips, who teamed him up with the local boys, Scotty Moore and Bill Black. Together, they cut an old Arthur Crudup blues song called That's All Right in 1954. The sound was hillbilly, but it rocked hard. At the same time, as he hijacked and twisted R&B, Elvis Presley destroyed country. He wore eyeshadow the first time he played Nashville's Grand Ole Opry and came off stage to be told, we don't use nigger music. Pretty soon, the bigots had no choice in the matter. Within a couple of years, every country boy wanted to sing just like Elvis. And rockabilly, the rocked up, itchy hillbilly sound, had laid waste to the niceties of Nashville country. So, Elvis was a rising star, and he was still recording in Sun Studios in 1955, and we went on tour, and Roy Orbison saw him. Roy Orbison went to Sun Records, he recorded some stuff as well. He was just a guy in the band, the Teen Kings. In 1956, who joined the Teen Kings? Peanuts Wilson. <laughs> 
the band broke up at the end of that year. The next year, 1957, Peanuts Wilson recorded Cast Iron Arm and another song, two of his big flops. So I got to sing Cast Iron Arm for you. And this, because I always make any good, this is my rockabilly outfit here, of course. My tenor, I've got to <laughs> get ready and, and take the coat off so I can actually rock. <laughs> and, I, and I brought this as my because I thought pink's a bit more rockabilly and it sounds a bit more brash, this, this ukulele, so I love it. Okay, are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> Sit down, boy. I said, don't mess with me. I got a cast iron arm. I said, don't mess with me. I got a cast iron arm. And when you mess with me, that only rings my alarm. <laughs> While the music was a rockin' and the joint was a jumpin' with jive. Woo! While the music was a rockin' and the joint was a jumpin' with jive. Well, the same cool number made the same wrong move. So I hit him in the head. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you don't mess with me, I got a cast iron arm. I said, you don't mess with me, I got a cast iron arm. 